for real estate investors, why would you use an LLC? All right, well, LLC, uh, LLC is the ideal structure for real estate, especially your rentals um, and, and long-term holds. Uh, and the reason is an LLC, either a single member LLC or an LLC tax as a partnership is much better than a corporation for taking losses. And because of that, we can use a strategy called cost segregation, which is a cool strategy to, to front load your tax depreciation deduction. So what happens is they'll take a building, let's say you've got a million dollar investment uh, or maybe a $10 million investment. Let's take the $10 million one and uh, you hire a cost segregation company and they'll come in and say, hey, you know, maybe two and a half uh, million or more of this $10 million investment uh, is eligible for accelerated depreciation. The reason is they've taken that big building and they've broken it into components that can be written off quickly um, to say, hey, you got a, a parking lot here and you've got you got fixtures and electrical and, re you know, removable ceiling panels and so on and so forth. And um, and so instead of having this deduction written off over 39 years, uh, you can get maybe 2.5 million right up front. And that produces a giant tax loss, um, which if you're a real estate professional can wipe out all income. If it's a passive investment and you're not a real estate professional, it can wipe off all your passive income. And uh, that's how in that particular year, y you might not pay any tax. Um, so it's a good trick. So uh, the key is though, you gotta have it set up in an LLC, uh, not a corp to be able to take that loss. Um, LLC also is eligible for other tax tricks like 1031 exchanges, long-term capital gains rate, installment sales, uh, all kinds of other cool things. Um, so LLC for your real estate, um, keep that in mind. Okay, any questions on these before I go into how you pay yourself? I just want to throw out a couple of things if I might, because I know there's all uh, ends of the spectrum on this call. This, for those of you that don't know, there's two reasons for an entity. One of them we all know is the obvious one, right? Which is asset protection, right? It, it, it limits our liability to the things that are within that um, entity. But the other reason, in case you don't know, is tax strategy for the way it's going to be handled for taxes. That's why you want to get with your tax professional and, and talk to them, not just your asset protection attorney, that most of the time their main focus is just on asset protection, not necessarily on the way that it's handled for taxes. Number two that I will say is, and Kevin, you can verify this, when we're talking LLCs, it should be a manager managed LLC for anonymity purposes. So you, because you do not have to disclose who the manager, uh, who, who the, um, who the members are. Yeah. Depending on the state, um, the, uh, the, the, each state has different disclosure rules, but uh, manager managed also gives you active participation to be able to deduct those losses. If that's yep. what you're looking to do. Yep. 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 And then yep. the last thing uh, that I'll throw out there, can you just briefly cover what requirements are necessary to be considered a real estate professional and have that sweet um that uh, ability to wipe out income with depreciation absolutely yep so a real estate professional means uh there, there's two thresholds one is that you're spending at least 750 hours a year in the real estate trades uh and that, so that could be 750 hours managing rental property acquiring property um, rent rentals are probably easiest. And then, uh, if you're, if you're, uh, doing a lot of, um, long-term holds, even on land that can qualify. Um, the other cool thing with real estate professional is it's not just rental real estate. If you are in any of the construction trades and certain engineering, like civil engineering and structural engineering, um, then you might also be, uh, you will also qualify to be in the real estate trades. So I've got a number of contractor clients uh, and their businesses are doing phenomenal, right? You know, that a lot of people don't realize how much a contractor can make uh, with a well-run business. Right, right. Uh, and they, the cool thing with construction guys is they also tend to love real estate above all else. And so they'll acquire a whole bunch of um, real estate and rental property and we can do cost segregation. And because they are in the real estate trades, all day, every day, they have a few thousand hours, you know, they're well above the 750, um, then we can take losses on their rental real estate and offset uh, their business income. 
So the first requirement is 750 hours in the real estate trades. And like I said, construction's included in that. Um, and if you're a real, real estate broker, right, that's also in the real estate trades. The second requirement is not just the 750, but you need to have more hours in real estate than you have in anything else. So, um, for example, um, I have a CPA business, and even though a lot of my clients are in real estate construction, that does not unfortunately qualify me uh, as being in the real estate trades. Uh, I also have a, own a lot of real estate, so even if I did have 750 hours managing my properties, which I don't, but let's just pretend I did, 750 is not my number. I would have to spend more time on the real estate than I did in the CPA business, um, and uh, unfortunately, I'm not there yet, right? So. Uh, you have to spend plenty of time in the real estate business. So the two thresholds, 750 hours and more time in real estate than any other occupation. Awesome. Okay, but if you I do that and you qualify as a real estate professional, that allows you to take real estate losses below zero, right? And wipe out other income. It's a pretty cool trick. Which is a beautiful thing. Amen, brother. I